I was working as a junior agent at GAC, which was General Artists Corporation, and I think it was in 1964, the beginning of 1964, somewhere around there, the end of 63, 64, and Joan was, you know, walking around the halls and we just started talking and we became friendly. We were her agents and uh, I was just a junior agent, just out of the mailroom. And um, shortly after that, I think in like February of 19... 95 she did the tonight show and was a great huge success and that's where i met her i was very close with her i was her agent in new york i moved to california and i went into the management company and joan asked me if I would manage her, um, and I said, absolutely. And she moved out here shortly after that. I think um, maybe she moved here in 71, something like that, maybe 72, earlier, I don't know. And um, we were very close for many, many years. Uh, I think I represented her for 20 years. And I would say many of those years we spoke every day. I also got a great kick out of the way she, you know, entertained like she was uh, the queen of uh, England or she was living in Versailles. Uh, I actually found her house for her in Ambazac way. She was looking for a house for quite a while and I was driving around on a Sunday and I called her and I said, I found your house. Come over here right now. She and Eddie came over, fell in love with the house. Uh, I think it's basically where Melissa grew up mm -hmm. more than when she lived on Coldwater Canyon. Um, Joan used to come to my house. I would go to her house for dinners. Um, we were very close. Israel meant a lot to Joan. Every opportunity she had to publicly be very pro-Israel, she got it in. I mean, even if they asked her a question about something else, if she could turn it around and get in how much she loved and cared about Israel, she would get it in. I think it was a grandmother was telling her granddaughter a story about the Holocaust in France, and it was in the New York Times. And Joan read it, and she called me and she said, you have got to call your friends. She said, if I call them, they're going to dismiss me. I am asking you, call Barbara Streisand, David Geffen, Barry Diller, Calvin Klein. And she went on, you know, to a few more people that I was very friendly with. And she said, before they come and get us, we have got to all speak out about being Jews, about Israel, because I feel a horrible anti-Semitic feeling coming. I mean, she was very outspoken and proud to be a Jew. Mm -hmm. I was born in Brooklyn, raised in the five towns, which was all Jewish. And, you know, I was just always thought 
to be Jewish was very special and you were the special people. I never experienced any anti-Semitism. Uh, I went to Boston University, a very Jewish college, and then I went into the entertainment business. So my entire life, I was always, you know, you hear me speak and you know I'm Jewish. Oh yeah. So we sp spent several uh, break the fasts at my house. Um, I know that we spent Passover a few times. Um, I think we even went to temple either one or two years together on the high holidays. Years ago, many, many years ago. She said one line that drove me crazy. I mean, and it was only because it pertained to me. Joan, I am not a very vocal laugher. Joan made me hysterical. I mean, you know, yeah. and I, I could see her do the same show 30 times and she would still get me hysterical. At my 70th birthday, she said, the one thing that I learned from Sandy Gallen, when you move in a house, plant shrubs. <laughs> and somehow that just struck me very funny. Well, Joan, um, as pro-Israel as she was, she was as supportive to the gay community. And any time I was dating anyone, and I'm going back 35 or 40 years, Joan was always supportive, always invited them over to her house for dinner. We would go to the polo lounge for lunch, and she loved making a shidduch. She was a very, very good daughter. A real Jewish great daughter and mother. I think it's important um, to recognize how hard Joan worked. Her success was no accident. She worked harder than anybody. She went and she performed every night to get material. She would index the jokes on index cards. Um, and she was one of the most ambitious, hardworking people I have ever met. Get on a plane for a one-nighter to make a buck, she would do it. And she knew what she wanted, you know. She wanted to be a big star. And she became a big star. And you just told me you were going to ask me, how would Joan like to be remembered? And I remember saying to Melissa at Joan's apartment uh, when she was sitting Shiva, if Joan could see what has gone on in the media the last three, four, five days, she would die. She would be so unbelievably happy. And I think she would want to be remembered exactly how she was remembered. 
She was given credit for everything she did, and they made her out to be one of the biggest stars that ever lived, and she would have loved it. Well, I would wish Melissa everything Melissa wishes for herself and everything Joan wished for Melissa. Melissa was Melissa. Melissa.